Coming up on This Week in Torrance, we'll take you through a one-of-a-kind holiday experience you won't want to miss. Then 600 local middle school students worked up a sweat to minimize carbon footprint on their campus. Plus, we'll tell you how you can register for a unique food tour in Los Angeles thanks to a local partnership. And with the chilly weather hitting the Southern California region, experts say it's important to know how to use your heaters properly in order to stay safe this winter season. These stories and much more are just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. Hello and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Jin Chen. And I'm Ben McCain. Thanks so much for joining us. Here are your top stories. A program that supports local students to succeed celebrates 25 years. At the recent Torrance City Council meeting, the Volunteer Center South Bay Harbor Long Beach was recognized for its Operation Teddy Bear program, now in its 25th year. The center provides more than 4,000 school bags filled with books, educational materials, and wellness tools annually to the most underserved first grade students in the South Bay and Long Beach. The organization hopes that with a little kindness and a special gift, it can often positively change a student's experience and expectations for the future. Now all of the school bags are packed and delivered by volunteers who go into the classrooms during the drop-off time and read to students. 25 years is something we're very, very proud of, and we could not do it without so many corporate sponsors in the city of Torrance throughout the years. This year, we're especially grateful to your business development department for helping us secure a location um, where we've been able to pack the bags in the city of Torrance this year. So as we teach the kids about what they're feeling, we are feeling warm and fuzzy and very, very grateful this evening. Two new items were added this year to the school bag based on feedback from teachers, including a Rencorec, an arithmetic rack to assist the first graders with counting and a steam engineering kit. The Volunteer Center has been in Torrance since 1967. Besides serving the South Bay, it also serves 44 cities through its Court Referral Community Service Program. A larger-than-life feature at Wilson Park will soon receive some much-needed maintenance. Torrance City Council members approved a $50,000 grant by the Annenberg Foundation for the restoration and maintenance of the Wilson Park Treehouse located on 2200 Crenshaw Boulevard. The 2,500-square-foot wooden structure was designed to give children and adults of all ages and physical abilities an experience as they walk along wooden pathways 12 feet above the ground. Some of the improvements include refurbishing, replacing, or repairing parts of the treehouse. Now, the grant will help fund five years of maintenance. Work is planned to start in January 2020 as staffing and weather allow. The treehouse was constructed in 2006 and was officially the state's first universally accessible treehouse. Local residents in certain parts of the city will be asked to vote for their council member in the city's first district elections. In 2018, the Torrance City Council passed a law establishing by-district elections for city council offices. On the map, you can see the borders of where all six districts are. Now, this is the first phase of district elections with council candidates from districts 2, 4, and 6 on the ballot on March 3, 2020. The second phase takes place in 2022 with districts 1, 3, and 5. Once all of the districts are introduced, the city council will be comprised of six council members, each residing in and representing each of the established six districts. The mayor will remain elected at large. Now, there are a few things to keep in mind before the big day. You must register to vote by February 17th. You can do so online at lavote.net or by visiting the Torrance City Clerk's Office or any of the Torrance Public Libraries. You can also find all the information you need about the upcoming elections by going to torrancevotes.org. You'll find important links from checking your voter registration status to finding your polling place to even viewing a sample ballot. Don't miss out on the opportunity to take part in an important democratic process. Be sure to cast your vote come March 3rd, 2020. For more information, go to torrancevotes.org. 
With the new year around the corner, it also means big changes come January 1st, 2020. A wide range of laws were passed, including AB 375, which allows Internet users more control over their data. It gives users the right to know what data is collected, the right to reject the sale of your information, and the right to delete your data. Then minimum wage in California will increase to $12 an hour for workers at companies with 25 or fewer employees and $13 an hour for employees at larger companies. SB 188 will make California the first state to ban workplace and school discrimination based on a person's natural hairstyle or texture. Then in the new year, new moms get a big win as employers will be required to provide appropriate lactation accommodations that is close to the employee's work area. And new parents will have more time to care for their child under paid leave, which increases from six to eight weeks starting on July 1st. Other laws include stronger gun control, rent control, more protections to display religious items outside your home, laws to protect veterans and military personnel against housing discrimination, and smoking and vaping will be banned at all beaches and state parks. Once you are ready to take down your festive Christmas tree, be sure to dispose and recycle it properly. City staff is urging residents to recycle their unflocked Christmas trees by placing them in your green waste recycling container. Unfortunately, flocked trees cannot be recycled and should be cut in half and placed in your black refuse container. Unflocked trees six feet or smaller can be placed in your green waste container and will be collected during normal trash pickup times. When you recycle, make sure there are no stands, tinsel, or ornaments still attached to the tree. If you are planning to place your tree on the curb, make sure it's at least four feet from your collection containers by 7 a.m. on trash day. Trees will be picked up through January 9th. For more information, go to torrentca.gov and the Public Works Department page. As you get ready to say goodbye to 2019 and hello to the new year, the city's Public Works Department has some tips on how to properly dispose of unwanted household items. Common household items like old or used TVs, computers, cell phones, batteries, paint, Pesticides, motor oil, and solvent all contain toxic chemicals that should not be thrown away in the regular trash or recycling bin. Instead, the city says to gather up all of your unwanted e-waste and bring them to one of the safe centers near Torrance. SAFE stands for Solvent, Automotive, Flammables, and Electronics. And the closest safe collection center is in San Pedro on 1400 North Gaffey Street. They're open Saturdays and Sundays from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. This center is open to all L.A. County residents. They recommend bringing items in a sturdy box, preferably in their original labeled containers. There is a, label, there is a limit of 15 gallons or 125 pounds of hazardous waste per drop-off. Items not allowed are explosives, ammunition, radioactive materials, trash, tires, large appliances, or controlled substances. Now to get information on the next City of Torrens or South Bay e-waste collection event, or to learn more about the Safe Center in San Pedro, call 888-253-2652. The City is offering free movie screenings at the Bartlett Senior Center. Every Thursday and Saturday at 12.30 p.m., they feature a different movie Doors open at 12 and seating is limited to the first 25 people. Upcoming movies include Redwood Highway, Holiday Inn, and The Hustler. The afternoon matinees are being offered thanks to the city's Community Services Department. If you have questions, you can call 310-320-5918. The Torrance South Bay YMCA is calling local foodies to take part in a unique experience tasting the flavors of Los Angeles. You can sign up now for the Six Taste Food Tour taking place on Sunday, February 23rd. Tour guides will take you on a four-hour historical and cultural stroll through downtown Los Angeles while sharing with you the diverse flavors each restaurant offers. Attendees will get to sample signature foods from popular to hidden neighborhood gems. There are six eateries included within a 12-block distance. The excursion leaves from the Torrance South Bay YMCA. Be sure to wear your walking shoes. The cost is $89 per person. Six Taste is the number one food tour company in Los Angeles. Be sure to sign up online before February 9th to secure your spot. We're still ahead. A Louisiana-based chicken fast food chain is coming to Torrance. Plus, there's a new virtual reality experience at the Delamo Fashion Center. We'll tell you all about it. Don't go anywhere. Hmm. Maybe you can make retirement happen. 
After all, you made home ownership happen. Homeschooling yourself on loans, beefing up your credit score. So I'm pre-approved. You were like, yes! Sorry. Color coding listings, ticking boxes, and flushing every toilet in a 20-mile radius. Home sweet home. You aced house hunting. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Hi, I'm Torrance Mayor Pat Fury, and from all of us here at City Hall, I want to take just a moment to wish you all a happy and safe holiday. I'm so proud to call the City of Torrance home and to work for a community that takes such great pride in all that we do. I hope your holiday season is filled with happiness, love, and peace, and that the new year brings you and your loved ones lots of joy and prosperity. Happy holidays. One of Torrance's more popular holiday traditions is in full force again this year. People of all ages come from near and far to see the display of holiday lights that spans blocks and blocks of the small seaside Ranchos neighborhood. As Torrance City Cable reporter Colleen Farrell reports, some new rules are in place this year to make the experience safer and more enjoyable for residents and visitors alike. Let's take a look. The trek down Doris Way of the Seaside Ranchos community of Torrance is as it's been for the past 34 years, a sight to behold. Its transformation into what's known as Candy Cane Lane or Sleepy Hollow during the holiday season makes it a community residents like Mary Michael are proud to call home. We love it. We think it's very festive. Um, people enjoy coming here. We enjoy doing this for the community. This year, Michael had to make a few logistical adjustments while planning a holiday party at the home she's lived in since 2002. We started the event a little bit earlier. It's in the middle of the week, not on a weekend. Um, and we've told them to try to Uber or Lyft. Um, and if not, they can park at South High and we'll go pick them up and bring them over. That's because the Torrance City Council passed new rules to make the experience safer for residents and visitors. Stationary street vending seen here at last year's event is now banned. Roaming vendors are still allowed with sidewalk restrictions. To keep it clean, new trash cans are now scattered throughout the neighborhood and parking on one side of the street is dedicated for emergency services. Among the new safety measures was installation of this stop sign here on the corner of Roberts Road and Doris Way. Some residents say it's helped to slow down traffic, making it safer for both pedestrians and motorists. Basically, it's been godsend and it was very, very necessary. But some neighbors say the solutions are less than perfect. I think it would be wonderful to have resident parking permits and we could have permits for ourselves so we can park in front of our house and we could also have permits for our guests so we could still have parties. I like to have parties. Still, while the streets feel a little quieter this year, at least during the week, it hasn't deterred those seeking a glimpse at the neighborhood's array of legendary decorations. We actually came all the way from Los Angeles to be here, so we, drove, we probably drove over an hour. You know, it was worth it though. I feel like this is like a good Christmas type of thing to do, you know, whether you're going on a date or whether, you know, going out with family or friends, kids, things like that. And so it remains a must-see for those seeking a little holiday magic here in Torrance. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Colleen Farrell. Thanks, Colleen. The Seaside Neighborhood Association is keeping a log of feedback from residents and will look at ways to further improve traffic and safety for future years to come. Sleepy Hollow runs through January 1st. Delamo Fashion Center and businesses nearby collected the last of the donations for the Torrance Transit Stefa Bus Toy Drive. Hey, he just dropped off. Let's give him a round of applause. Yay! Yay! Torrance Transit staff thank the community for giving back to those in need for the holiday season as hundreds dropped off gifts for the annual toy drive. Transit staff were at Delamo Fashion Center from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. to collect donations on December 13th. Transit brought out one of their classic buses where all the toys were stored. Members from the Women's Club and local first responders partnered with Torrance Transit for this project. There were also additional collection bins located inside the mall at Hometown Buffet and at Lazy Dog Cafe. More than 2,000 toys were collected this year along with more than 1,200 in monetary donations. We would like to ensure that as a city, we're contributing to provide 
um, donation and toys for the needy families in the city of Torrance. Um, this is an important event for all, for, for, for all of us, all the departments that are partnering, because we want to make sure there's no, no needy family in the community that does not have toys. So we want to make sure that they all do. I've always been involved in toy drives and stuff like that, so I feel like it's definitely something that, you know, if you can give back, you should do it. We're all uh, widows or widowers and uh, seniors, uh, basically, and uh, just want to help out, uh, give something good for the season here. Unwrapped toys, canned foods, non-perishables, and monetary donations were collected. The beneficiaries are the Torrance Family Crisis Center, Torrance Police and Fire Toy Drive, El Camino College Warrior Pantry, and the Torrance Delamo Rotary Club. The event started in 1998. The Torrance Salvation Army picked up the last of the food donations for the holidays. Protein helps. Every donation is necessary to make sure families during the holidays have enough food. This was the second holiday canned food collection from the city of Torrance Can Tree. Nearly 200 people will benefit thanks to all of the non-perishable food items donated this season. Every year, the city hosts a holiday can tree from Thanksgiving through Christmas. Providing food is one of the many services the Salvation Army offers. The cans were donated to the Torrance Core Food Pantry that is dedicated to providing supplemental food on a short-term basis to local residents in need. In the Salvation Army uh, at, at the food banks, we get easily 80% of our non-perishable food in the six weeks leading up to Christmas. So, you know, for us it's a big deal. Clients are welcome to pick up a non-perishable food box once a month and perishable items once a week. The Salvation Army Torrance Corps provides services to individuals and families in Torrance, Lomita, Carson, Harbor City, and Wilmington. All food distributions take place at the Stillman Sawyer Center. All food distributions take place at the Stillman Sawyer Center. Delamo Fashion Center is now home to a one-of-a-kind virtual reality pop-up experience. Nomadic, the immersive entertainment company, and Simon are offering an arcade-style virtual reality training called Lightsaber Dojo. It's developed by Lucasfilm's Immersive Entertainment Studio. The training is adapted from ILM Collab with Lab Vader Immortal, a Star Wars VR series. Tickets are $9.99 per person, available at a walk-up kiosk. Players will be able to train with a lightsaber and the force against waves of training droids and Star Wars creatures. Delamo Fashion Center is the first of six locations chosen for this new experience. A Louisiana-based restaurant known for its quality chicken finger meals will be coming to Torrance soon. Construction drawings were submitted for a planned review for a restaurant called Raising Cane's on the boulevard. It will replace what is currently a Pier 1 Imports. There are plans to demolish the existing building. Raising Cane's will be a one-story building with a drive through The concept is simple and unique with a limited menu. They use 100% premium chicken tenderloins, which they marinate for 24 hours. The company was founded in 1996 and has more than 470 restaurants in 27 states. This will mark the first location in the South Bay. Magruder Middle School students came together to teach one another the importance of reducing their carbon footprint. Humans buy about one million plastic bottles per minute in total. For the first time, middle schoolers hosted a walk-a-thon to eliminate single-use plastic. 600 students took a break from their regular PE class and broke a sweat to pledge to help sponsor two hydration systems. The event was planned by students from the school's green team, environmental science class, and Girl Scouts working towards their silver award. Students were told to bring reusable water bottles that day to use and learn the benefits of a hydration system. For every lap, students pledged $1 and hoped to raise awareness. It's really important because then it shows the length and like how far the people in Africa have to walk. So they get to experience that in first person, like real life, to see how far they have to walk. And it's a, it's a long distance. It's like to Berlin and back. Plastic is like a really big thing nowadays. 
and we need to get rid of it because it's basically destroying our oceans and ourselves as humans. So we need to get rid of it and this event is basically helping get rid of it. It's important for the kids to participate because they are helping to, they know what they their money is going for. They know that they have a goal of two hydration stations and everyone will be able to participate and take ownership of those hydration stations when they come on campus. Every student who participated walked eight miles or three kilometers to experience the challenges people in third world countries face. That's the average distance they have to walk to get water. For students like in Inaya Youssef, this event hits home for what her parents have experienced. Culturally, I'm from Ethiopia and back then my parents, my parents used to always have to collect water so I feel like since we have it so easy now, I want us to be more um, grateful for what we have instead of just r ruining it so we have to go back and collect nasty water. They are hoping to have the hydration systems by the spring. This year, students participated in the Plastic Challenge sponsored by Grades of Green and are one of the finalists. Public health officials are warning travelers that they may have been exposed to the measles recently. Officials say there is another case of it involving three people who traveled through LAX during the holidays. They went through Terminals 4 and 5 on December 11th between 6.50 a.m. and noon when they were infected. Los Angeles County Department of Public Health officials say they are looking for others who are at risk for measles and may have been exposed to these travelers. If you are traveling internationally or have not been fully protected against the illness, medical experts say to get the measles vaccine to protect yourself and others. As the chilly weather is underway, there are ways to stay warm and safe. Portable space heaters are popular during this time of year. The National Fire Protection Association says purchase a heater with the seal of a qualified testing laboratory. Keep the heater at least three feet away from anything that can burn, including people. Choose a heater with a thermostat and overheat protection feature, then make sure to place the heater on a solid, flat surface. When choosing a heater, check to see if it has an auto shut off if it were to tip over by accident. Never place it where it blocks traffic, keep children away from heaters, and plug it directly into a wall outlet. Space heaters should be turned off and unplugged when you leave the room or go to bed. Officials say two in five deaths in space heater fires involve portable electric space heaters. Three dogs are still looking for their forever homes this holiday season. Lexi, a 12-year-old pug, was featured on Canine Corner this year, but still hasn't been adopted. She is very sweet and loves spending time with people. Then Ertz is a male and is eight years old. He has a lot of energy. He needs a family that will be patient with him and may need some training. And Candy is a female canine who is nine years old and is looking for a home. She's playful and likes to go on walks and loves cuddles. These dogs will be featured on the next episode of Canine Corner with Popeye. And if you are interested in adopting any of these dogs, please give us a call at 310-618-5762 or email us at caninecorner at torrentca.gov and we can put you in contact with the rescue group. And don't forget to tune in to watch what producer and host of Canine Corner, Rhiannon Tretanich, has in store for her holiday show. And now let's check in with Leslie Robbins on what's new and exciting in local sports. Hey, Leslie, what do you have for us? What's up, Jen and Ben? Coming up on the sports desk, South football fought hard in the state championship game. See the results. Basketball and soccer take over Torrance Plus, playing hockey for a special cause. All of that plus so much more. Be sure to watch every day at 4 and 9.30. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Leslie. Well, that does it for us on This Week in Torrance. I'm Jin Chun. And I'm Ben McCain. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Happy holidays.